Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to name ionic compounds with transition metals. This is part two of three part series in which we go over how to name the different the three different types of ionic compounds. So this one is transition metal plus nonmetals. And here's the rules, and we're going to go and do a couple of examples, and then the rules will make a lot more sense. So the, the rules is you, you first start with the name, you start with the name of the first element, and then you have to indicate the charge in the Roman, Roman numeral. The reason why is because transition metals, the, the metals that you see here. What's special about transition metals is that transition metals can have multiple charges, unlike main group metals, which has a designated charge. For example, when you look at magnesium, because it's in that second column of the periodic table, we know for sure magnesium is going to have a positive 2 charge in any, any ionic compound. But when we look at Say when you look at say uh copper, copper right here. Copper is a transition metal and it can have multiple charges, it can be positive one or positive two. So for Roman numerals, we need to indicate the charge with Roman numerals. Uh, and then for the second element, we similar to the the rules for the first type of ionic compound, you just you have the root and then you add IDE to the end of it. Alright, let's go jump into an example. So the first one, Fe2O3. We're going to start with the name of the first element, so Fe is iron. And then this, the second element, uh, it's, it's oxygen, so it becomes oxide, if we add IDE to the root of it. Then to figure out the charge, uh, there's two ways to do it. I'll, I'll just show you the shortcut, which works about like 90 something percent of the time. You just reverse crisscross. So that means oxygen is going to have a negative 2 charge. And then iron is going to have a positive 3 charge. So then we just write 3 in Roman numerals to designate that the iron has a positive 3 charge. All right, let's do another example. NiBr2. First element is nickel. So we're just going to write its name nickel. Let me make sure I'm spelling that right. No, I didn't spell it right. Nickel with we'll an E before the L. And then the second element is bromine, but we add IDE to the end of it, making it bromide. And then uh, we can reverse crisscross to get the charges. So this goes here, that goes here. That means bromine is going to have a negative one charge, and then nickel is going to have a positive two charge. So we use the Roman numeral two. And then another example, this is TiO2. So name of the first element, titanium. And then... Second element is oxygen. We add IDE to the end of it, making it oxide. So I was saying that the, these this uh, crisscross method works about 90 something percent of the time. This is an example when it doesn't work out because if we reverse crisscross, that's gonna if we reverse crisscross, that's gonna tell us titanium is a positive two charge, but we know that's just not right because look. Oxygen by itself is negative two charge, and how do I know that? Again, it's positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four, negative four, negative three, negative two. So oxygen's in the column of negative two, making it negative two charge. But because we have two oxygens, it actually makes this negative four charge in total, which means that titanium has to be a positive four charge because overall the compound has to be neutral. So in this case, titanium is Four. It's one of those those play examples where that crisscross method doesn't work out. All right. So the first three examples I showed you how to go from formula to name. The next three we're gonna go name to formula. <clears throat> All right. So lead, nitride. We look at where lead is. Lead is down here. So it's not technically a transition metal because it's not within this space. But lead and the elements around it, so these elements right here, they sort of act as transition metals because they have multiple charges. So we have lead, we're going to write Pb, um, and it's positive 2 charge because it tells us there's just 2 there, so 2 positive. And then nitride is nitrogen, and then we figure that's a negative 3 charge if we count it over. So then we have N3 minus, and then now we can crisscross. We, first, we make sure first that these charges don't cancel each other out, then we crisscross, so it becomes PB3N2. Another example, copper sulfide, start off by writing out the elements under charges, copper tells us it's positive one charge because of the Roman numeral, 
and then sulfide is a negative two charge. You can figure that out by counting the column again, and then making sure that these charges don't cancel each other out, and they don't. So that means we crisscross, and then when we crisscross, we get copper two s one or just s. And then last example, tin selenide selenide. Tin is a Sn, so again, it's not one of the transition metals, but it acts like a transition metal because it has multiple charges. So we have Sn, and it tells us it's Roman numeral 4, so that means it's positive 4 charge, and then selenide, uh, Se is right here in the same column as oxygen, so it's going to be negative 2 charge, making sure that these two positive 4 and negative 4 don't cancel each other out. So we have to crisscross, and then when we crisscross, we get Sn2. And I just realized this is an example that the crisscross method actually doesn't work because if we crisscross, we, we get SN, um, SN2, uh, SE4, and that's not the best because it, uh, if we just had SN, SE2, that would work better because it's positive 4 charge. So if you have two of these, it's negative 4, so it cancels out. So I guess you can... You can do the crisscross method, but you just want to make sure it's in the re most reduced form. And we divide both of these by two, then we get that. And that's it. That's how you would name ionic compounds. That's how you would go from formula to name and name to formula if your ionic compound has a transition metal. Hopefully this clarified a lot of questions that you're having. And if this video helped, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel because I'll be posting a lot of videos that help you in this class. And if you like my tutoring st teaching style, and want individual tutoring, just check out www.conquerchemistry.com slash online tutoring. Keep practicing, and I'll see you next time.